Um, I think we have time for one more question about what is the role of forgiveness um, in your faith? I mean, I'm going to assume that you're all going to say, you know, that it's important, but is it, um, how essential is it um, to ask forgiveness to be forgiven, and how does that work in your faith? Of course, I'm, I'm always open. Again, you know, um, you know, we, I talked about the repentance and uh, that our act with God, and how we kind of deal with Him, and you kind of an add on to that would be, you know, if you had a wrongdoing towards an, an individual, as to how would you approach that, you know. And in Islam, again, the very simple thing is first, of course, you had this chance of first realizing what your wrongdoing is. But secondly, of course, you, after you have attained that, what I just described earlier, and uh, you are now at peace with yourself that you are going to rectify that behavior, then the second thing would be to approach that individual to ask for forgiveness and um, try to, if now, what if that person has passed away or you can't find him? Well, there's a solution for that too. Of course, there's that, you know, you try to look for him. If you can't, then if he has any family or family members, then you be good to them, take care of them. And again, give charity so that you can help others to do good. The act of forgiveness is obviously, you know, something that I think somebody mentioned also is it allows you to, uh, to unburden that guilt that you have, the, the, you know, that we have. Uh, but uh, the person who uh, you're asking from, for forgiveness from also has to understand something, is that um, uh, there's a, a quotation from the prophet, and he said that, you know, have mercy on, on those who are, are creatures of this earth and the Lord of uh, universe, the Lord of heavens and earth will have mercy on you. What it means is that, of course, you have to show forgiveness too. So the person who is being wronged has to also kind of accept that the person who, you know, who wronged him, if he has come to terms of accepting his wrong, then you have to initiate because after all, who's the judge? Are we the judge or our creator who will be the final judge on the day of judgment? So we have to kind of ask ourselves if we are doing what we are required to do, not be the judge that he did wrong to me, so I, he has to pay a penalty for that. Let God be the judge because you have to forgive. And that is the very difficult aspect for humans to come, you know, because we don't forgive easily. Any other I thoughts? The, yeah. I think that the other, we talked a little bit about this aspect of guilt, and I think that's a very personal um, feeling. And just going back to what you were saying earlier, I find that what a lot of people find difficult, at least in the ones that I've encountered in the in working as a rabbi, is when you know when the high holidays come, I speak a lot about forgiveness and and uh, repentance and all the things. But I think that a lot of people, the same way that we have guilt, a lot of people have grudges that they hold. And um, I think it's almost easier to learn how to say I'm sorry than to actually learn how to say I accept your apology. And um, to me that's a less self-centered action. So as much as we have to learn how to ask forgiveness. We may, we may say that the most difficult words of the English language are, I'm sorry. But I think that a lot of people find it much more difficult to forgive someone. And at least in my congregation and the congregations that I've served in the past, you find so many people have whole grudges with their relatives, with their children with someone that they have done something and you hear about that you know 
20 years later and they're still, and I see that because, you know, they come for a holiday celebration and, and they're still holding those grudges. So it's, I think it's sometimes sad to see that they will never be able to, to go beyond that. And, uh, and I don't have a solution, you know, it's like, it does. That's a good observation. You know. Well, because of time, um, I'm going to cut us off there. And if you would like to talk with the speakers afterwards, they will be at tables and um, out in the lobby. And this is an important topic. And you brought up a great observation about human nature. And you may want to spend some time talking with the speakers this evening. Um, I also want to tell you in the lobby, there are a couple other organizations you might want to visit. Um, Taylor University has a, an exhibit out there. And they are doing. Um, an event next Tuesday night that I actually will be moderating, which is called Love Thy Neighbor. And in the program, I have the wrong time starting. It's at uh, 7.15, not 8.15 at the Rediger Chapel, and you're all invited to that. Um, the Indiana Center for Middle East Peace, um, they have an exhibit out there, and they are doing amazing work as well. And they would like to announce um, two events that are coming up. They have a dance group from Beth Bethlehem called the Dyer Dance Theater coming to the Plymouth Church on May 9th, and they're only performing in three cities, and Fort Wayne gets to be one of the cities, so they would encourage you to come to that. And then next September, they have Gandhi's grandson who's coming um, to Fort Wayne, and so that will be on September 22nd, so mark that on your calendar. And then finally, um, the Baha'is of Fort Wayne on this Monday are um, asking for your attendance. Um, at IPFW. Um, they are seeking to bring attention to the injustice by Iranian authorities who are denying Baha'i Institutes of Higher Education the right to educate their young. So they'll be showing a video and have a discussion at IPFW, and I'm sure uh, Dr. Spence and his wife will be there. I think you're leaving part of the discussion, if that's correct. Um, and so I'd encourage you to be there. If you're interested in being on any um, sign-ups, um, getting emails from me, um, or on mailings from me, I have some sign-ups out there that you're sure welcome to do that. Um, you can purchase a DVD from this evening. Um, that'll be $10. That is outside as well. I'd also encourage you to go visit the Haven, which is around the corner. There's a piece of artwork in the room that has the different symbols from all the faiths at Canterbury School. And there's a hidden picture within the piece of artwork, which I would encourage you to find if you can't find it. Um, maybe somebody around will tell you what it is, but I'm not going to tell you right now. Um, finally, I want to thank um, the, all the HIP members that are here tonight for helping make this our fifth event possible. I appreciate you so much. Um, you are from uh, people from other faiths that I have grown to love and care about deeply, and I appreciate so much. And I want to thank the speakers this evening. Let's give them a round of applause.